two powerhouse programs, one from Division One, the other Division Four, set to do battle tonight in Waukesha. It's week number one of Friday Night Rivals on My 24. Hello again, everyone, with Wisconsin Football Coaches Association Hall of Famer Terry Kelly, John Weiser with you once again for another season of exciting high school football here in the greater Milwaukee area, and it gets no better tonight than Franklin and Catholic Memorial. Two teams ranked in the top ten. Matter of fact, Catholic Memorial picked as the number one team in the Milwaukee area. Should be a battle of perennial powerhouses. Franklin coming into this game off an 8-3 and three season a year ago, made it up to the level two playoffs, losing to Muskego. And uh, this is a team that brings a couple of their offensive linemen back and a pretty good running back as well. Well, they've got nine of 11 starters back in offense, so Coach Lewis Brown feels that this is a team that can really compete with the best of them. Then you look at this Catholic Memorial team, four of their five offensive linemen are back, plus probably the best running back in the state of Wisconsin. You know, a number of Division I athletes is an incredible thing on this field tonight, so uh, I think the spectators are going to get all that they wish for. Despite all of that returning talent, Bill Young's still not sure what he's going to see out here tonight as coach of uh, Catholic Memorial. Well, Bill always prepares well. I think he loves to worry, and I think in a sense it really motivates his kids. They don't get complacent they're ready to go out and fight hard every game let's take a look now at who we're going to keep an eye on tonight as our players to watch and we'll start first with franklin well franklin the two two fellas on offense who've been playing since they were freshmen uh Jax brooks started as a freshman tremendous receiver and terrence shelton a running back played quite a bit as a freshman and has been a starter for two other years on defense for the Sabres, a couple of players coming back from injury. Will Graffin, good outstanding uh, linebacker. And Jace Miller, returning from injury, but still was selected as a captain for his team. Lots of looks from the service academies. Well, we mentioned the Penn State connection on the CMH roster. They're up front here on offense. Corey Smith, Donovan Harbor. Number one, Corey Smith for a reason number one. Fast, elusive, and Donovan Harbor not only has size, but excellent feet. And yet another Oxner going through the high school football ranks tonight. Number four, I I think uh, Bill Young and his staff are looking for a way to have more Oxners, couldn't pull that off. And Matt McClosey, uh, top tackler a year ago for Memorial. Should be a great matchup tonight. These two teams squared off last year. CMH held on. They did not relinquish the lead, but had to hang on to pick up the victory last season. We'll see who wins it here tonight. But first, Mike McGivern will be back next with our coaches as we continue from Ken Holub Stadium in Waukesha, Friday Night Rivals on My24. Welcome back to the Gruber Law Office's Friday Night Rivals High School Football Game of the Week. Presented by Planet Fitness, I'm Mike McGivern, alongside two Hall of Fame coaches, Billy Young from Catholic Memorial, Lewis Brown from Franklin. Lewis, before we start, I want to say congratulations to you and Coach Beck. 
in the offseason, inducted into the Hall of Fame for the Wisconsin Football Coaches Association. Well deserved, and how great for your family and community. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. To join people like Coach Young means a heck of a lot. Yeah, it's awesome. Hey, let's talk a little bit about this year. You know, these kids go, they, they off season, they get after it hard. You go two weeks to camp or a little bit longer, and they go hard. And then, you know, the first game, and, and I don't care how long you've been doing this, but the first game is something special. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think last year we had a lot of deer in headlights when we played this game. A lot of young kids, and uh, this year hopefully uh, they're a little bit more seasoned. Yeah, Billy, same question. You know, first game, and we've, we've all been around, you and I, a lot longer than Lewis, but first games are always something special. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a, a learning curve for the kids. And like Coach said, with deer in the headlights, just got to read your keys, relax, you know, play with emotion, but not emotional. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of guys out here that have a lot of uh, playing time underneath their belt, but young guys, they just got to, you know, to get in the groove quickly against a great team like Franklin. You know, I'm glad you said that, Coach. Now, Lewis, I'm going to ask you the same question. I, I love high school athletics for a lot of reasons. And one is, look, you both have a lot of dudes, right, a lot of guys that can play. Then that second tier that as coaches we hope by game three or four – Things start to slow down, but every once in a while, a couple of guys surprise us, right. and things slow down early, and they compete like crazy. Yeah, it's it's a thing that, uh, you know, like when you scrimmage, you know who your players are, or that's why guys are going to joint practices. It's get getting some seasoning time for those young kids that haven't played a lot, and, it, you know, it's it's the tempo you have in practice, the, the guys that are on the team that are experienced, the leaders, that, that all has to come together. Yeah, I agree. Lewis, same question. I love that part about this. And, again, you have some dudes, but there are some guys that we're going to see tonight that might even surprise you and your staff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think you're only as good as your you know, your worst kids, to be honest, and hopefully you don't have uh, too many bad kids, at least I know Coach Young, this program doesn't. Uh, uh, we got some young kids that will have to prove themselves today, but uh, you know, they wouldn't be on the field tonight if they weren't deserving. Yeah, 100%. Guys, I got to tell you, you guys are both so great for high school athletics here in the in this area, the state of Wisconsin, two of the best football programs in the entire state, and we're so lucky to have this as our opener. I'm going to cut you guys loose. On the other side of the break, John Weiser and Terry Kelly will get you the call of the game, only on my 24. One minute. Check one, two, one, two. John checking one, two. Terry checking one. Three, one, two, three. Back at Ken Holub Stadium, the United States Army Color Guard with presenting our colors tonight as we get set for our national anthem. And remove your hats and join us for the United States Army presentation of the colors. Our national anthem will be sung tonight by Callie Miller, a freshman at Catholic Memorial High School. 
What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Outstanding job by Kaylee Miller, a freshman from Catholic Memorial High School. I understand she's also a freshman luck, volleyball player, so a student athlete as well. Our streaming uh, reminder, we're on my24milwaukee.com. All game long, live on the stream, as well as across the broadcast channel. Let's go to our uh, coin toss tonight, brought to you by the United States Army. Be all you can be. Line judge, Vinny DePlaris, linesman, Bryce Pott. And bat judge, Gary Nybauer. Catholic Memorial won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. Franklin All right. Franklin's the visitors. They get to call a coin flip, right? A special coin tonight. That's the heads, okay? The lightning bolts was the head. Yes, sir. State of Wisconsin's the tail, all right? Sergeant Gibbons here is going to do the flip for us. You're going to call What are you going to call? Tails. He's going to call tails. That's a head. You guys have one. You can, want to defer. They want to defer. You guys obviously want the ball, right? Yep. Which, which way? We would like to kick that kick way. Kick that way. Put your backs to the scoreboard. Face the scoreboard. Who has won? Defer your choice to the second half. White is going to receive down here. Hey, guys, have fun. Week one, guys. Have fun. Enjoy. Go ahead. Week one. Our coin toss this season brought to you by the United States Army. Be all you can be. Our kickoff tonight is brought to you by Leona Local 113. Kick off your career with Leona Local 113. Beautiful night here in Waukesha. Temperatures in the low 70s as we get started here tonight. Franklin will receive wearing the white. Catholic Memorial in the blue and gold tonight. Sean Nicholas will do the kicking. A senior, a five-sport athlete at CMH. That young man is busy all the time. <laughs> When it's not football, it's soccer. When it's not soccer or football, it's hoops. Cross track. country. Don't cross, cross country. country and track. I know, coach. I know. That math was always something that you know, <laughs> can create a trouble. Number one, Jacques Brooks back deep along with number 30, Terrence Shelton. Inside the five-yard line awaiting the Nichols kick. And it's a low line drive. And a flag right at the line. And... Coach, you and I were talking before the ball game. This, this was, was going to be one of the keys tonight. The this penalties. was an issue last year. Uh, Catholic Memorial, you know, always eager, always excited, and sometimes a little too excited. They had a lot of offside penalties, illegal motions a year ago. So the one young man wanted to get down and cover, and I can understand wanting to cover Brooks and Shelton because <laughs> they both have good speed. Low line drive, going to try and keep it away from that tandem back there. Shelton and Brooks. Two of the big skill position players on this Franklin team. They will be featured on offense tonight. So we'll re-kick following the five-yard penalty. Notice how that ball is teed up. 
on its side here. So, again, he'll try a little low-line drive, and it'll be falling on almost immediately there by the Sabre player, Wade Meissner, getting there. Tight end for the Franklin Sabres. will cover it up near his own 35-yard line. So Franklin will get started on offense tonight. First and 10 from the 35 for the Sabres. Well, Franklin would really like to have long, sustained drives. They they feel that they have an advantage in their depth. A number of Memorial guys going both ways, as well as substitutes are, are also starters. There's the United States Army offense for Franklin Sean tonight. Kelly in at quarterback for the Sabres. Empty backfield going with four, make it five receivers here. And on first down, Kelly. Pressure, fires, incomplete, looking for Brooks. Covered nicely on the play by Demias Lopez. Nicely done there defensively on that pass. Able to knock it away. Here's the defense for the Crusaders. Again, that linebacking core. Kalewa, McCluskey, McClinton, and Brown. Three of those linebackers all on the wrestling team as well. They will hand it off. Shelton, left side. High steps his way across the 40-yard line. Out of bounds across the 42. Once again, Lopez, the corner here on the near side, ready to make the stop. You know, Shelton's 6 feet, 206. And as you look at him, you don't think he's quite as fast as he really is. Plus, he is a hard runner. Gain of about seven on the play. We'll set up third and three for the Sabres. Dylan Drakowski now in at a flanker. He'll come up. He's on the near side of your screen right at the 40-yard line. Offset backfield from the pistol. Shelton will get the call. Shelton will get the first down. Simply diving over the middle that time. Takes it across the 45 to the 46. Butler Brown there to make the stop for the Crusaders. You know, that front three for uh, Catholic Memorial. PV's 240. Martel Harris is at 365. Nico Rogers, number 99, 6 feet, 280. Best Electric sponsors our first down. Best Electric service. Connect with the best. Empty backfield once again. First and 10 from their own 46. Four-man rush here. Lofting. Deep ball. And it's incomplete looking for Jacques. Incomplete. McCluskey, the inside linebacker, step for step with one of the fastest players in the state. There's a look at Bill Young. 382 victories. 392 victories, excuse me, coming into this game here tonight. Knocking on the door of 400. Well, tremendous career. He, you know, mm. Bill's been at uh, Catholic Memorial for you know, such a long time. People think the school was built around him. He's been there 46 years. Shelton, the single back, showing blitz on the outside. They give us to Shelton up the middle, breaks a couple of tackles across midfield to the 45. Josh Oxner along with Nico Rogers there to make the stop. But a nice run, gain of about nine on the play. Coach Lewis Brown has nine starters back in that offense, so offensive coordinator Drew Ambrose had a lot of confidence in what these guys were capable of accomplishing. Judgkowski lined up here to the near side. Shelton the single back once again. Shelton will get the call, picks his way around the right side. First down inside the 45 to the 42-yard line is Shelton before he is driven back there. Let's head down to the sideline, our first visit of the night with Mike McGivern. So, boys, talking to Coach Beck from Franklin before the game, and a Hall of Fame coach, by the way, and he said, hey, listen, last year I think we, we competed, but we're a whole different team this year. And he said, uh, Mike, keep an eye on our running back. He's, he's the real deal. Want to introduce my grandson Liam to you guys too. He hadn't been to a game before, but he's having fun. Boys, back to you. Glad to have Liam aboard. First and ten, Sabers. Another best electric first down. Pressure coming, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Good pressure. Martel Harris got the hands up. The six-three, three hundred sixty-five pound nose tackle for the Memorial Crusaders. Saw Memorial that time in what you might call a bare front, trying to figure out just how many guys will come. And you saw that Franklin, one of the ways 
they're going to try to counter some of that. They love to get little passes dumped off to Shelton. Second and 10. Opening drive for Franklin here. They've cracked the midfield stripe. They're at the Crusader 42-yard line. Second and 10. Shelton fumbles the football. It's loose and picked up. Scooping it up is Butler Brown, and he will take it to the house. Shelton hit immediately as he took the handoff. Coughed it up. Arvanus Butler-Brown scoops and scores for the Crusaders. It was Peavy who knocked it out. Carl Peavy is a first-team all-conference player a year ago. Had 92 tackles on the year, 20 of them for loss. So a defensive score. Sean Nicholas on to attempt the extra point. Randa on the hold. Owen Strabig does the long snapping. One of the biggest long snappers in the state. 6'8", 300 pounds. Snap to Randa. And Nichols' kick is good. So the turnover... And a scoop six by Butler Brown. And it is a stunning turn here as Franklin methodically moved the football. And then Shelton had the ball jarred loose by Peavy in the backfield. You know, you can see two plays really had an impact on all that. The play before that, big rush. They wanted to just dump that ball over the line to Shelton, but yet Catholic Memorial's defensive line batted that down set up that play where PV busts through. Let's head downstairs to Mike. Hey, guys, I'm here with Nate Jancic from Best Electric. Hey, I'm so sorry for your loss. Uh, I know that your grandmother uh, recently passed, and I, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, Mike. Thank you. Hey, um, and Bruce will be with us next week, oh, yeah. so don't don't shine too much because uh, he's going to have you yeah, do it every week. Okay. Things going really well at Best Electric. How's business? Oh, it's great. It's great. We're always happy to you know help out, do stuff like this, and everything's been going really well for us. We have a great time. You know, the fact that you guys continue to give back to the community, be part of programs like this, starts with your dad, obviously, and it certainly is in your blood. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you guys for the opportunity. You guys, Best Electric. Back to you, boys. Best Electric Service. Connect with the best. 7 nothing. CMH on the fumble return for the touchdown. And again, another low kick through the hands. And covered up at the 30-yard line. That was a dangerous play there. A Lyona kickoff brought to you by Lyona Local 113. Kick off your career with Lyona Local 113. Well, Wait. now let's see how Franklin responds. Your first turmoil of the game. You know, you've got a, a veteran offense. Are they ready to respond to this, you know, change of momentum and see what happens here? Bill Young in that blue top. Walking the sidelines. Came within a hair of his 10th state title last year, dropping to Marshfield Columbus. Shelton gets the call here on first down. Spins across the 35 to the 37-yard line. Brought down by Demayas Lopez, the corner on the far side for the Crusaders. I mentioned earlier that deceptive speed. You look at Shelton, I think partially because of his size, you don't realize he's running as fast as he is. But a 4.4540. That's moving with the quick guys. Smith lined up in the slot here to the near side. And dump it over the middle, and it's thrown behind the intended receiver, Wade Meissner, the fullback. Captain of that offense as well. So now it becomes third and short here for the Sabres. One piece of that offense who's missing is... is Andrew Human. He had 37 catches last year, six TDs. Uh, hopes to be back in about three weeks. He had a uh, hyperextended knee. Brooks lined up to the far side. They'll roll Meisner, the fullback, into a tight end spot. Shelton alone back to the right of the quarterback. Now Meisner back in motion. A 
timeout taken here by Franklin. A little confusion getting that offense set, particularly the receivers here to the near side. So Lewis Brown will take the timeout to talk it over. Yeah, Drew Ambrose, the offensive coordinator, is you know regarded as a real offensive strategist. He runs a lot of uh, virtual coaches clinics, and I think you know they were trying to get things just set up, make that defense have to make some adjustments. But in process of doing that, Franklin got themselves a bit confused. Drew Ambrose, the offensive coordinator for the Sabers. Again, a veteran coaching staff here. Well, we mentioned earlier that uh, both Lewis Brown, Mike Beck inducted into the Hall of Fame this year, and we need to add our congratulations to John Weiser <laughs> going into the Carthage College Athletic Hall of Fame. I was disappointed in the reading the write-up that they just didn't refer to you as the voice <laughs> rather than listening to your name, but you've broadcast so many of Carthage's sports and have done it for over two decades. Just excellent work, needed to be honored. Thank you very much. We finally have a complete Hall of Fame crew now. I feel com we've completed the crew now. Third and short here. Pressure coming over the middle. Meister with the catch. First down and more across midfield to the 48 of the Crusaders. Gain of about 14 on the play. McCluskey there to make the stop the inside linebacker. Wade Meisner, his first catch tonight. Now Meisner, one of the captains, they list him as a tight end. He's actually kind of an H-back. They're going to move him all over. Shelton around the right side, inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. Gain of about five on the play, so a little bit of spark now in the offense following that timeout. Martel Harris making the tackle for the Crusaders. Adding a little tempo now to this offense. Shelton trying to go up the middle. Going to be stacked up. Got a couple. Terrence Shelton. Bring up another third and short. McCloskey getting off from the bottom of that pile. A couple of players still slow to get up here. So third and about three here for the Sabres. Early here in this first quarter, down 7 nothing. A fumble return for a touchdown by the Crusader defense. Led to our only score thus far. Under eight minutes to play here in the quarter. Toss to Shelton, left side. Now cuts it back up the middle. And that cutback may have gotten him the first down just inside the 40. Let's see. The official here on the near side marking him short. He's lined up as a toss to the left, but... Shelton put that left foot down and cut back into the middle. So fourth and about a yard here for the Sabres, and they will go for it here. Brooks will line up as a wing here to the near side. Shelton the single back in the backfield. Shelton with the call. First down and more. To the 35, moving the pile inside the 33-yard line is Terrence Shelton. Well, number 99, Nico Rogers almost made that tackle in the backfield, but Shelton just shifty enough, slipped that tackle and get the much-needed first down. Yeah, he got a piece of him, then it was McCluskey and Lopez finally to bring him to the turf. So they convert on fourth down. From the 33, first and 10 Sabres. Play fake. Holly over the middle. Man there. Leaping grab down to the 11-yard line. Beautiful catch. Ben Virgis, the 6'4 junior. Nine catches a total last year. Comes up big here in the red zone. Ben Virgis starting to get noticed by some college coaches. His size and hands make him a valuable commodity. Reverse coming the near way. It's a halfback option. Open touchdown, Sabres. Shelton on the halfback option went right back to Virgis. Why not? 
And they're an extra point away from tying this one up. Well, Franklin coaching staff has to be pleased with how the team responded to giving up that uh, turnover and led to a touchdown. So that there's a reason these are two of the best teams, not only in the area, but the state, year in and year out. Cooper Mueller on the kick. Cooper Mueller on the kick. 34-35 on extra points a year ago. Good snap back to Deutsch. The kick is up, and it is good. We are tied at 7. We will take our break here in the first quarter. The Sabres respond in a little toss sweep option. And the lefty Shelton able to hit Virgis in the end zone. We're knotted at 7. This is the Gruber Law Office's Friday Night Rivals presented by Planet Fitness. Marvanus is how he does his first name. Marvanus? Marvanus, not Marvanius. Well, that's how we got it. We're two very funny families deliver dinnertime delights every weeknight. Experience the 80s with the Goldbergs at 5, then laugh along with the Baxters on Last Man Standing at 6, right here on My24. So the Sabres, after fumbling on their opening drive, come right back. Tie this one up. Back deep. They'll try and kick it away from Corey Smith, and they will. I'm trying to, Butler Brown trying to get his way up to the 30 yard line, and that's where he'll be met. Brought down on the play by Emmanuel Joseph for Franklin. Again, our kickoffs this season brought to you by Lyona Local 113. Kick off your career with Lyona Local 113. Butler Brown hobbled on that play, going to come off here. So our first look at the offense here for the Catholic Memorial Crusaders. M.J. Mitchell, the junior at quarterback. Corey Smith, 1,300 yards rushing a season ago. The senior running back, number one. 400 yards away from being the all-time leading yes. rusher in Memorial history. Honorable mention all conference, Mitchell at quarterback. Four man front. And Corey Smith, his first carry of the year, dances his way across the 30 and brought down immediately at the 32 yard line. Good open field tackle by Cooper Camley. Camley, a senior, 27 tackles a year ago at that cornerback position as we set the defense for you for Franklin. Again, Summers. Fox and Joseph in that linebacking core, all wrestlers. All made it to the state, state meet last right. year. Lewis Brown, very excited about that. He's a former wrestling coach. Gain of two, second down, eight for the Crusaders. Their own 33. Again, they give us to Smith. And he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Good play. Will Graffin there, the second team all-conference outside linebacker. Making the play. Another look here. Third and seven for the Crusaders. Both he and Talon Summers 
right there on Smith. So sets up third and long now, third and seven for the Crusaders. Mitchell with time over the middle has a man there. He'll take it in for the touchdown. Ty, excuse me, Lopez, Demayas Lopez, 67 yards. You know, a lot of people, as they look at MJ Mitchell, don't realize even though he only threw four of 12 passes last year, they had a very good senior. Catholic Memorial coaches feel he is an excellent passer. People are not aware of how well he can throw the ball. That was on a rope and in stride to Lopez. Nicholas for the extra point, and it's through. 14-7, Crusaders. Demayas Lopez, once again, another look. Watch this throw. Beautiful toss over the shoulder catch and again Lopez in there because Marvinus Butler Brown out with that ankle injury on the kickoff let's head downstairs to Mike hey guys they're looking at number five's right ankle his right ankle I think he's going to be okay they're asking a lot of questions and he said no I think it's getting better I think I'm feeling better and a lot of people told me in the offseason, this kid from Catholic Memorial, this quarterback, can throw it. And you better watch him throw it. And, and certainly he showed it in that play. Boys, back to you. Mike, thank you. You watch that little flick of the wrist mm. that is he threw that ball. And Butler Brown, another one of those factors here, too. Two-way player. Starts on both defense and offense. Here's an end zone look here. Sheldon and Brooks, eat for the Sabres. Can't throw it any better. Nope. As you said, thrown, what, 12 passes all of last year, completed four of them. And comes up big here early. Three plays, 67-yard drive, or excuse me, three play, 70-yard drive, a 67-yard pass from Mitchell to Lopez. Sean Nicholas. The five-sport athlete. Talked about that at the opening. Chip this one down the field. Brooks will pick it up at his 11. Sprints to the 15-20. Cuts back inside the 25-yard line and pulled down there. Beautiful open field tackle. Ben Kalawa. And so momentum back to the Crusaders now with that seven-point lead. Four and a half minutes to go here in this first quarter. There's your scoring summary. Brought to you by the Milwaukee Building and Construction Trades Council. And Bill Young wants a timeout. We're quite on the same page here on the defense. You know, each week we are going to highlight a hit of the game, and that will be brought to you by the Milwaukee Admirals. Glad to have them back again this season. And training camp just around the corner. High school football starting. Training camp opening up in September for the AHL. Perennial power Milwaukee Admirals. I don't want to overstate something here, but I think this is a critical juncture of the game. Uh, you know, you had seen Franklin respond to that touchdown, get down the field, and all of a sudden, explosive play like that. And one of the goals for Franklin, the Sabres, is to try to wear down these guys who are playing quite a bit of ball both ways for Memorial. And, okay, they need to come back and do that again. The only guy that, for Franklin, really goes both ways is Jace Miller, mm-hmm. plays, you know, down uh, the nose at defense and at the right guard on offense. And that's somewhat of a change this year for a Bill Young team. He's been used to the two platoon system, right. so have six guys going both ways. That's a little different. That they, puts a little 
little something extra out there now to, to be thinking about as the season continues. Wears had, down. Had to totally change the way they practice. Mm. First and ten, Sabres. Shelton will get the call. Cuts back to his right across the 25. Moves the pile out to the 30-yard line. Gain of about six for Terrence Shelton. Martell Harris, the nose tackle there to make the stop for CMH. Now, Shelton went over 1,000 yards last year at 19 touchdowns. And has ca caught the ball as well. Yeah, he's not one-dimensional by any means. He can catch the ball. At 22 receptions, a pair of touchdowns last year. He'll be headed to Penn State next year. Gets the call again here on second and short, trying to work the right side. Got it just across the line of scrimmage, maybe two on the play. Carl Peavy, who forced that fumble recovery return for a touchdown, there to make the stop. Brooks lined up in a slot here near side. Franklin will change the play here. Plenty of time. Mario looking like they're going to st stunt or at least blitz here. Shelton. Right side. He'll get the first down just across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Big play there. Able to pick up the first down, the best electric first down, and move the chains. Travis Brown, outside linebacker on that far side, made the stop. See Butler Brown back into the game now. Seemed to be moving pretty well. He's back out there now at his free safety position. Best electric first down for the Sabres. Just at their own 35-yard line. Fake the end around. Now we'll try and set up a screen here to the near side. Meisner, and he is met in the open field and dropped. Ben Kalewa, another nice tackle in the open field for that linebacker, the outside linebacker here on the near side. A 4.0 student, and he, had, he knew his keys, read it well, came up and put the stop on. Open field, one-on-one, -on -one, won that battle. Clock rolling here, approaching two minutes to play here in this first quarter. Second and 11. Play fake to Shelton. Well, swing it out, completes the pass here near side. Travis makes the catch inside the 35, brought down by Eddie Jones at the 32-yard line. Dylan Drutkowski, the senior flanker, makes the catch. And an explosive play for the Sabres. Moves it inside the CMH 35-yard line. They'll go no huddle. A little pause. Check the play to the far sideline. Brooks, the single receiver, out to the far side. Dratchkowski split to the near side. Terrence Shelton alone back. Two tight end look. High snap. Holly's in trouble. He's going to be chased. He'll throw it away wisely that time. Broken play there. Carl Peavy chasing Callie, the quarterback. Joey was expecting to hand that ball off. And if people watching at home thought that should have been intentional grounding, remember the rule right. got changed last year. And so Calais, who got a lot of experience last year as a sophomore, uh, their you know, quarterback, uh, Boston Halloran, got hurt early. So Calais got in for 151 throws, completed 95 of them, over 1,300 yards as a sophomore. Did the smart thing there to throw it away. Lay from the pistol. Looking now on the scramble. He will slide. Gave himself up just shy of the 30 yard line. Kalewa again there. And he slid inbound, so the clock will continue to roll here late in this first quarter as we take another look. Good coverage downfield by the Crusader defense. Yeah, pretty good pass protection. But the coverage was such that just now open throw man to receive that ball. Third and nine from the CMH 32-yard line. 
Calais has time. Flags rain down. Shelton gets the screen pass. Cuts back inside the 25. Down to the 20-yard line is Shelton, but we'll have to check out multiple flags on the play. James and McCluskey both there to make the tackle, but... Both the umpire and the referee throwing flags. <laughs> so holding will back them up 10 yards. Stops the clock with 40 seconds to go here in the quarter. Yeah, critical mistake. Uh, they had gotten the first down, and to lose that, lose the field position, exactly what Memorial was looking to have happen. Third and 19 for Franklin now. They'll empty the backfield with Shelton split out wide here to the near side. Draczkowski in the slot here near side. They'll go five receivers. L.A. gets it away and broken up nicely on the play by Eddie Jones. Able to step in front of Draczkowski that time and swat it down. Boy, that was a beautiful coverage that time. Great effort by Jones not to commit the interference penalty while batting that one away. Jones, one of just many, many Catholic Memorial athletes who do both track and football. Fourth down for Franklin. And a short end over end punt. Will bounce out of bounds near the 19 yard line. So just a 23 yard punt. So the Crusaders will take over. Let's see where they mark it out here. They mark it out at the 24-yard line. Marvinus Butler-Brown is in there now once again. And he was out with an ankle injury earlier, but he is out there now on offense. He is a wideout split to the far side. M.J. Mitchell with a touchdown pass already tonight. Set to take the snap. And they'll run the end around. Brown leveled across the 25-yard line by Tegan Fox. And that will end our first quarter here in Waukesha. We're at Waukesha South Ken Hollip Stadium. First night of the Gruber Law Office's Friday Night Rivals presented by Planet Fitness. And that's the end of the first quarter.
with Mike McGivern and Terry Kelly. John Weiser with you from Waukesha tonight. Going neon color night on the Franklin sideline tonight. Can't fool me or Terry. We knew that. Second down and eight. Corey Smith trying to get to the outside. Good coverage by Franklin. Boy, they flowed nicely to the football that time. There were five, six Franklin Sabres corralling Corey Smith that time, led by Talon Summers. Well, Smith is an all-state halfback headed, as we've mentioned, to Penn State. But one of the things you have to watch for here, Memorial coaches were looking forward to having people key too much in Corey Smith and watch M.J. Mitchell pull that ball away from him and keep it himself. Just a gain of two, third and seven now for Catholic Memorial. Their own 27-yard line. Mitchell fakes the handoff, spins to his right. Now cuts up field. They'll get it across the 30 to the 32-yard line, short of the first down. Mitchell brought down by Josh Stramborski, the corner on that far side. Get one more look here. Just good coverage again downfield, and Mitchell forced to hang on to it. Elusive runner. Yes, he is. Tough to bring down. And Corey Smith is your punter. He'll drop back to the 20 yard line here. It's this one away. It will fall short of midfield. It will go out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. Near the 45-yard line is where it appears they will mark it here. So just a 23-yard punt by Corey Smith. Sets up Franklin with excellent field position here early in this second quarter, trailing by seven. You know, on the plus side, and, you know, for Memorial, the way they approach things, having Corey Smith back there as the punter forces the defense to respect that, but then has to be able to deliver, you know, the appropriate kick. Shelton cuts it back behind the tackle across the 45, down to the 42-yard line. Martell Harris, nose tackle for CMH, making the stop. That's the 13th carry already for Shelton. Play gives it to Shelton once again on second down, and he's pulled down just inside the 40-yard line. Carl Peavy, Peavy with a forced fumble back in the first quarter that led to a scoop and score. He's had a couple of tackles already tonight, plus that forced fumble. Third and short now for Franklin at the CMH 38-yard line. Jaskowski split here to the near side. Brooks on a wing, left side. Low snap to Shelton, and he's buried in the backfield. Matt McCloskey, the senior linebacker, Immediately on top of Shelton as he took that handoff. Their leading tackler last year, he had 110 tackles. You know, 11 tackles for loss, and that kind of bare front has been giving Franklin some difficulty. You've got six, seven guys up on the line of scrimmage. You're not quite sure who's going to come and who isn't. Player that we featured in our pregame tonight, he and Josh Oxner, get this, they combined for nearly 200 tackles a season ago. High snap. He lost it. And he'll be wrapped up back at the 31-yard line. Who else? Carl Peavy having quite a ball game here in this first half. It was a high snap. Mueller had trouble hang, hanging on to it. And Peavy able to bury him. You know, a couple of mistakes are really biting Franklin's efforts here and causing him all kinds of trouble. 
Ted downstairs to Mike. Hey, guys, uh, don't be surprised if they pull one back and throw it over the top here. They, they've uh, run the ball a few times, and I think they're, they're ready to maybe fake one and put one over the top. Listen to the offensive coordinator. They, they feel like uh, Franklin's uh, coming up a little bit too quick. Back to you, boys. We'll keep an eye out, Mike. Thanks for the heads up. First and 10. Good field position here at the Franklin 32 for the Crusaders. Mitchell, play fake. Waiting. Now we'll cut it up field. Tries to sidestep the defender. Can't get out of the way. Talon Summers again there to make the stop along with Ben Hefter. One more look here. And again, good coverage downfield by that Franklin defense. Franklin's defense, however, has to make sure they hold that edge. If you let Mitchell get to the outside and break contain, you're in trouble. Well, this season, touchdowns are being brought to you by Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness, the judgment-free zone. Second and 11 from the 33. Stack receivers here to the near side for the Crusaders. Butler Brown in motion. They give to Corey Smith. Smith to the 30-yard line before he is driven back. Nice job there. A lot of eye candy there with the motion and everything. Summers was there again to make the stop for Franklin. You know, Memorial has so many weapons. They have tremendous speed. A number of these guys are part of their state qualifying relay teams. Hale Johns and Butler Brown split out to the right side here on third and long. Third and eight from the 30. Fake the shovel. Mitchell will keep it. Runs into traffic and nowhere to go. Summers again stayed home. Kept the middle. Didn't buy it. And excellent field position goes by the wayside here on this drive for the Crusaders. See, Summer's another one of those wrestlers. He wrestled heavyweight last year. He only weighs 220 pounds. So he's, you know, used to fighting much bigger guys than himself. And you could see him do that kind of throw down, take down. Not quite in Sean Nicholas range for a field goal attempt here. So they will go for it here on fourth. They'll keep Mitchell in there along with Corey Smith, who does the punting. Mitchell, play fake, now rolling to his right. Going to dump it out, has a man in the end zone. Can he get there? No, it's incomplete and short. He had a man out there. Cale Johns, Ty Davis was out there in coverage. Mitchell just couldn't get it there. It came up short. You know, once again, I, yeah, we're getting the replay. If he had it to do over again, I think he might have taken off and run with his speed, his elusiveness. Uh, Franklin has to watch, as we mentioned earlier, that outside edge on their pass rush. 6.46 to go here in the first half. Crusaders up by seven, but turn it over on downs now to Franklin. Well, this season, timeouts are being sponsored by Mental Health America of Wisconsin and Uplift Wisconsin here when you need an ear. Second time out of the half used by the Crusaders here. They have one remaining as we head back downstairs to Mike McGivern. Hey, guys, I'm here with Peter Baraki. He's the program manager, Veterans Respite House. Hey, it's so nice to meet you. Can you talk a little bit about some of the things you guys do? Yeah, so I work at the r, &R House, which is uh, the nation's first peer-run respite for veterans. Um, so we, we actually were looking at Pewaukee, Wisconsin, but operate for the whole state of Wisconsin. So if a veteran just, they need that break, they need to get yeah. away, um, they can come stay with us free of charge. We're all veterans ourselves, and we're certified peer specialists. Um, we also offer a 24-7 non-crisis warm line for veterans and their family members. So if they just need someone to talk to or help look for a resource, they can give us a call. And then we do virtual support groups for veterans too. Brother, thank you so much for what you do for our veterans, and thanks for serving. No, thank you. you thanks bet. for having me here tonight. Yeah, it's nice to meet you, Peter. Boys, back to you. Mike, thank you. Peter, we thank you for your service and what you're doing for our, our area veterans. Callie in trouble, now scrambles left, 
going to get away with it and throws it incomplete towards Jax Brooks. Franklin's sideline looking for a penalty, but no flag thrown. Eddie Jones on the coverage. I think that's the go. first look to Brooks tonight. You look at the front that uh, Catholic Memorial puts up, you know, its size, but what they also do to confuse that offense is they'll walk those linebackers up, sometimes almost like defensive ends. Sometimes you'll get what looks like a five-man rush. Sometimes they give you that bare front covering all the different gaps. Second and ten. Kelly again wants to put it up. We'll come back to Brooks, and it's incomplete thrown low. Well, Venus Butler Brown was there. Not a very good throw that time by Calais. Well, Travis Brown, the outside linebacker, came running up, put a little bit of pressure on Calais. So quickly turns into third and ten now for the Sabres. Clock stops, 634 remaining. Three receivers to the left. Clay again wants to put it up. Now scrambling on the run. Throws, finds Brooks across the 40, 45. Dances out to midfield where he's wrestled down there. Jax Brooks, his first reception tonight, brought down by Eddie Jones. Big conversion there by Joey Calais. Didn't want to have to kick that ball back to Memorial. Now they're going up tempo again. From midfield, 27-yard pickup. Another best electric first down here for the Sabres. Now they will not quite hurry up. They get to the line, but will change the play. They'll try a screen pass to Shelton. Left side, Shelton. Shelton inside the 20. Shelton to the 10. Shelton to the house. Touchdown, Sabres. Not only tremendous speed, but his balance really played a role there. 50 yards on the play. We'll look at it again. Tremendous balance, as you said, Coach. Right there. Shifting the ball to the opposite hand. Get away from the defender. Shelton, a 50-yard touchdown reception. Mueller for the extra point. And it is good. Midway through the second quarter. Boy, we've got a good one brewing here, don't we? We're tied at 14 on the Gruber Law Office's Friday Night Rivals presented by Planet Fitness. If I can have everybody's attention, there are about five cars that are parked in front of the production truck for the TV. Scoring line on the touchdown, did you? Yep. Uh, Double check. <laughs> okay. Who? Cool. All right. What did, okay. Four plays, 71 yards. Four plays, 71 yards. Fifty yards, screen pass for a touchdown. Calais to Shelton, and we are tied. It's time to say farewell to a pair of fan favorites. Solve one last mystery with Nancy Drew, and take one last ride through Riverdale during the series finales Wednesday, starting at seven on CW18. Mueller's kick, and that will go into the end zone for the touchback. 
Well, right now, much like a heavyweight fight, they're trading punches. You know, each team is showing the ability to have a quick score via the pass. And again, our scoring drive, four plays, 71 yards, the 50-yard touchdown pass to Shelton. Well, let's see how the Crusaders respond now. All our scores tonight, big plays. Mobile well, recovery for the touchdown. 67-yard touchdown pass by the Crusaders and a 50-yard touchdown pass now. And we got a late flag thrown by the umpire. Now the quality of athletes on the field, you know, kind of uh, make it sure that we're going to see some big plays. 12 men on the field here against the Crusaders. So first and 15 now from the 15-yard line for CMH. Mitchell, the quarterback. Smith, the single back, to his left. And Smith gets the call. And Smith spins his way back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe to the 21, gain of six on the play. Brought down by Manny Joseph, the outside linebacker. Now Smith, despite that sprinter's speed, you can see how shifty he is, and he's not afraid to take it up inside. Rushed for over 1,300 yards a year ago and 26 touchdowns. Second, we'll call it nine. Franklin came up looking like blitz, then dropped back. Smith gets the call, trying to break it through the hole, and just as quickly it closed because of Jace Miller. Good to have him back. Missed most of last season because of an injury, and boy, a big player coming back here making a big play for the Sabres. Despite missing a good portion of last season, still selected by his teammates and coaches as one of the captains, getting looks from all of the service academies, strong student, excellent football player, one of the few guys for Franklin that goes both ways. Mm -hmm. Gain of two, third and seven coming up here for CMH. Ball at their own 23-yard line. Three receivers to the right. Single back in the backfield is Smith. Mitchell throws it into a crowd. Incomplete, dangerous pass. He's looking for Marvinus Butler-Brown, broken up by Tegan Fox. But that was in a, a crowd there. Well, Catholic Memorial this year, two new offensive coordinators, uh, Scott Rice, well-known football family, state of Wisconsin, Mike Bashanich, and they're, you know, trying to work things through. But as we mentioned, number of guys are going both ways. They have to practice both offense and defense, so you don't get quite that continuity sometimes that you look for. Second punt of the night upcoming here for CMH. Smith, high, end over end, short, near midfield. Shelton will take it at his, the 49-yard line of the Crusaders. So 4.08 remaining here in this first half. And Franklin again set up with good field position here on the short punt by Smith. We'll see if Catholic Memorial goes back to a little bit more of that bear look. This season when a team gets inside their opponent's 20, they enter the Bryant and Stratton College red zone. Bryant and Stratton College enrolling now for the fall semester. From the Crusader 49 yard line, first and 10 Franklin, just over four minutes to go here in the half. Two receivers to the left. Shelton the back in the backfield. Clay will take the snap, hands it off. Shelton picks his way forward down to the 45-yard line. Travis Brown there to make the stop for CMH. Gain of about three. Bring up second and a good seven here. And the Sabres with two timeouts remaining. Catholic Memorial has one timeout remaining.
Brooks is lined up in a slot here to the near side on second and long. Shelton gets the call. Left side, takes a couple of people with him down short of the 40-yard line, short of the first down. And Nico Rogers got a hand on him that time, the defensive end for the Crusaders. Bring up third and a two here for Franklin. Need to get it just across the 40-yard line for the first down. Shelton the call again. Breaks a tackle. Bounces it outside and will get the first down just shy of the 36-yard line. Travis Brown making the stop, but boy, it looked like they had him. Nico Rogers again had a piece of him in the backfield. Right there. Shelton is on track to have a game where he's got over 40 attempts <laughs> rushing the ball. Not only does he have speed and toughness, he obviously must be in tremendous shape. Dylan Dretzkowski split out here to the near side on first and 10. Kalei going to throw a bubble screen to Jacques. And uh, Jacques Brooks wrapped up immediately for a loss back near the 40-yard line. Demayas Lopez read that play nicely on defense for the Crusaders. We saw Lopez make that touchdown catch earlier, now playing excellent defense from his cornerback position. Travis Brown slowed things up right away as well. Loss of three, second and 13. Play fake to Shelton. Clay in trouble, now scrambling to his right. Throws on the run, low for Meisner, incomplete. Intended for Wade Meisner, Xavier McClinton out there. Peavy putting on pressure that time, forcing Kalei from the pocket. Kalei, a good baseball player, just couldn't get his feet set to get a good throw there. Coming up, it's the Wendy's Halftime Report. We'll highlight this week's West Bend Insurance Scholar Athlete nominees, meet a few of our sponsors, including taking a look at Carthage College. That's all coming up in the Wendy's Halftime Report, the Carthage College first half highlights as well. Bounces off the intended target, incomplete. Looking for Ben Burgess. Burgess with a key reception. Lopez out there in coverage. Burgess made two spectacular catches that set him up first and goal at the 10 and caught the touchdown pass earlier in this first half. Arvanus Butler Brown standing inside the 10. Awaiting Cooper Mueller's punt. He averaged nearly 36 yards a kick a season ago. It's a good snap. Beautiful punt. That will sail. Trying to aim for the coffin corner, but it bounces into the end zone for the touchback. Once again, let's go downstairs to Mike McGivern. So guys, I, I run into Kyle Johnson, and he's the new head boys basketball coach at Catholic Forum. You look good these colors, brother. I love these colors. Yeah. Yellow is a great color. It's a great program here, too. Man, I, you know what? Great hire by Catholic Memorial. I've always been a fan of yours. I think you do a great job. Um, this, this Catholic Memorial program, Jeremy's left it in good hands and, and in good space. Yeah, he's left it in great hands. Kids coming in and know a lot about basketball, a lot about defense, spacing, all of those things. So it's very easy to coach that way, and it's exciting to do that. Hey, from uh, from public school all the time to private, welcome to the bright side. It's the great side, right? That, that's <laughs> awesome, boys. Back to you. Kyle Johnson, the new basketball coach at CMH. Crusaders will take over from their own 20 following the touchback. Mitchell, the quarterback. Corey Smith in the backfield. The give is to Smith. Looked up the middle and bounced it to the right side. Got it out to about the 21-yard line. Summers was there. One of the linebackers for Franklin. And Summers with five tackles already in the night. One of the things you see Franklin do so well is they stem those three defensive linemen shuffle to their right, to their left, create some problems on your blocking schemes, trying to negate that huge offensive line that Memorial has. Second and nine. 
empty backfield. They'll send Smith in motion. Mitchell will keep it. Mitchell trying to go up the middle, brought down. Short gain. And Franklin will take one of their two timeouts here on defense, saving some time here. Ben Hefter, the defensive end, was there to make the stop. So a timeout, Franklin stops the clock with 51 seconds to play. So each team down to a timeout remaining. And again, our timeouts brought to you by Uplift Wisconsin. Mental Health America of Wisconsin. Hefter only a junior, nice size, 6'3", 231. Got to play quite a bit last year as a sophomore and then 51 tackles on the year. Difficult assignment trying to take care of these special offensive players that Memorial has. 46th season on the sideline here for that gentleman, Bill Young. You know, he never ages. I mean, <laughs> in all seriousness, you look at him, he looks the same, he loves what he does. Uh, you know, kids kind of respond to him, and he, he, you know, has become one of those living legends. I, I think he'd hate to hear that term, but uh, certainly is true. I just like the look on their faces at practice when he breaks out the 80s references to players, and they're all looking at him like, who? who? He wasn't a happy camper when we arrived this no. evening because their buses didn't come no, to pick I the don't. team up. But he was proud of himself. He said he he didn't go off. Yes. <laughs> Again, Smith in motion. They'll toss to Smith. Met in the backfield. Dances away. Gets a block from Mitchell. And he'll get to the sideline and out of bounds. Great job by the Sabre defense to bottle up Corey Smith. Dominic Walters finally got him to the boundary here on the near side. You know, one of the things you do see from Franklin is tremendous pursuit. Mm. You see how they keep on their feet, to slide to the ball. Tegan Fox did a nice job of stopping Smith in his tracks on that toss. He had nowhere to go. He was trying to get to that right edge. So Franklin will get the ball back here with 41 seconds to play. Memorial likes to use that rugby-style mm -hmm. punt. Flag on the play. Now Smith thought the play was dead. And he's going to be wrapped up at the 19-yard line. We'll take a look at the flag. It was thrown by the referee in the backfield. Smith saw that flag come out, uh, and he stopped. He stopped. He thought the play was over, and a uh, little mistake. A legal shift. The penalty, of course, will be declined here. Franklin will take the ball at the... Crusader 19 yard line so we'll take another look watch this play here he sees the flag come down so he just stopped he realized oh wait a minute so they'll place it at the 20 so a key moment in this ball game the Bryant and Stratton College red zone coming up here for Franklin Empty backfield, three receivers to the left here for Kalei. Pressure coming, Kalei going to be sacked. Back at the 34-yard line, Matt McCluskey along with Carl Peavy providing the pressure. And Franklin will be forced to take their final timeout. McCluskey got him around the ankles and Peavy able to finish him off. He be quite the first half tonight for that Crusader defense. Yeah, uh, Carl, six, only six feet tall, 240 pounds, but moves very well. First team all-conference performer a year ago. And once again, you're seeing Memorial really shoot those gaps, creating some real problems for the blocking schemes of Franklin. Peavy with five tackles tonight, a sack and a forced fumble. And he's playing also at the tight end position yes. once again. We'll see in, the players. see in the second half if that becomes an issue. Yeah. 
So Franklin out of timeouts, 21 seconds to play in the half. They face a second at 21. Play with time over the middle. Brooks with the catch. They'll keep him in bounds at the 25 yard line. McCluskey and Xavier McClinton there. Franklin trying to hustle this clock it here. To save one more play. And they do not. There is a penalty flag. He fumbled the original snap. Yes, he did. He fumbled the snap and then picked it up and then clocked it. It's going to stay. Officials will huddle up here. Illegal forward pass. So Mueller will come on here. They're going to put two seconds back on the clock. So they want to put two seconds on the clock. Mueller on to attempt what will be a 48-yard field goal. You don't want to be Alabama against Auburn on this and have plenty of leg and drills it through. Cooper Mueller gets the 48-yard field goal as time expires. And what has been an exciting first half on the first week of Gruber Law Office's Friday Night Rivals Presented by Planet Fitness. We'll be back with the Wendy's Halftime Show after this on My24. Hey guys, I'm here with the district manager from Wendy's, Rolando uh, Maldonado, and thank you so much for being a partner and a sponsor of Friday Night Rivals. Thank you. As the local Wendy's Fried Chancy, Richmond Foods is happy to support the community and the students. Hey, I got to tell you that your breakfast menu is clearly everybody's favorite, including mine. Can we talk a little bit about some of the best-selling products that you have on that menu? Uh, our breakfast baconator is our number one sandwich in the morning, and all our sandwiches are made with fresh crack eggs every morning, and it's from 6.30 to 10.30. Man, that's awesome. You know, um, Youth Sports has always been big for Wendy's, and the fact that you guys have the Frosty program for youth sports teams, and you've been doing it for a really long time, I, I have to be honest with you, when I get my grandsons, I have them put their football or basketball uniform on, so when I bring them to Wendy's, we get a free Frosty. I'm not sure I'm supposed to do that, but what a great program that is. 
That's awesome. Uh, we appreciate that. And we do uh, any teenagers or anybody under 18 on a uniform, we do reward them for participating in sports. Man, that's awesome. And being a, a former student athlete like you from Milwaukee South Division, you understand the importance of what Wendy's does, giving back to our community. Hey, last thing for you, some new stores coming up. Uh, yes, we do have two stores opening later this year. We have one in South Milwaukee, and we have one in Plover, Wisconsin. That's awesome. Hey, thanks again for your sponsorship and partnership. Man, we love Wendy's. Thanks, guys. And tonight we'd like to highlight our Schuyler Athlete nominees brought to you by West Bend Insurance. And from Franklin High School, Shamit Sarana. Shamit competes in soccer and carries a 3.993 unweighted GPA. He is ranked first in his class and is a member of the National Honor Society along with being selected as an AP Scholar with Distinction. Among his many accomplishments, Shamit founded a tech startup called Holokies. He is a six-time WSMA state qualifier in the viola and piano. He also played in the Honors Performances Series at Carnegie Hall and Mizo. He was a first-place winner at State FBLA for e-commerce and placed 10th at the National FBLA in digital animation. And from Catholic Memorial High School tonight, Sean Nicholas. Sean competes in football, soccer, cross-country, basketball, and track and field and carries a 4.56 weighted GPA and has six semesters on the honor roll, along with being a member of the National Honor Society. Sean is an all-conference football selection as a kicker, a two-time soccer captain, a state qualifier in cross-country, and a state medalist in the 4x800 in track. Sean has currently earned nine varsity letters and expects to finish the year with 14. He gives back to the community through coaching middle school track, being a group leader at Bible school, and working with the Special Olympics. So congratulations to this week's Scholar Athlete nominees. Our weekly nominees will be in the running to receive a part of $5,000 in scholarship funds provided by the great folks at West Bend Insurance, the Silver Lining. Let's head back down to Mike McGivern. Hey, guys, uh, thank you very much. I'm here with Bill Stan Gravitz. He is the director of admissions for Brighton Stratton. Man, it's good to meet you. I'm a big Bobcat fan. Love it. We're excited to be here, excited to kick off the football season. Let's talk a little bit about some of the programs that you guys offer. I know there's a number of sports that you offer, and I talked to Ryan for a while today, in fact. But let's talk about some of the, uh, uh, the nursing programs, some of the programs you guys offer. Yeah, so we are an accelerated nursing program, no wait lists or petitioning for our program. Uh, we do offer a wide range of medical programs, including medical and LPN. So great opportunity to get out there in your career and start earlier than you thought you would. Well, I tell you, I've been on campus and, and I have seen uh, just the, the level of, of people there to help and to talk to these students. I think you guys do a great job. Absolutely, absolutely. Our student is our main focus, so um, we're really focused on giving you that personalized attention and making sure you're not just a number in the crowd. Not bad for Burlington, boy. You did good. <laughs> nice to meet you. Appreciate you. Thank you. You bet. Boy, back to you. Mike, thank you. 17-14, Franklin on top of CMH. Back with more of our Wendy's Halftime Report after this on My24.
17-14, Franklin, let's head down to Mike McGivern. Hey, guys, it's always very impressive to me when a 19-year-old decides he's going to join the U.S. Army. Andrew Browse has done that. Young man, thank you so much. Your decision, joining the U.S. Army? The reason I joined the U.S. Army was mainly for the camaraderie, teamwork, and the spirit of Corps that we serve for our people, sir. Hey, I, I got to tell you, uh, we had this conversation. Though your mom is terrified, your dad is awfully proud, your mom is proud. Someplace in Union Grove, they're having a fish fry, saying, let me tell you about my son, what he's doing for our country. And I just thank you so much. Tough decision. Are you? Uh, how happy are you? Six months in, right? Yes, sir. And she, very happy right now? Yes, sir. I love it. It's probably the best decision I've made throughout my life so far. After high school, I was lost, didn't know where to go, and... Army opens door, and I took the offer, and I would never step back on it. And your last question, when, when, you, when other high school-age kids, and you're 20, so two years ago, when they're feeling lost and they're not quite sure what they want to do, you know, I, I think joining the service U.S. Army would be a great decision. Yes, sir, I completely agree with that. It, it gave me a spot to be. It, gave, it gives you friendships and teamwork that you will never find anywhere else. You know, when you get done, there's no, there's nothing that you can't do. I want to thank you for, uh, for what you're doing and joining the service. Yes, sir. There's really nothing you can do once you're done here. It's, it's a lifestyle that you'll live with forever, sir. Man, you know what? You're a good man. I'm so proud of you, boys. Back to you. Do you have to coach him to call you sir? <laughs> Mike McGivern being called sir. 17-14, Franklin on top of uh, CMH, a 48-yard field goal as time expired in that first half, giving Franklin the halftime lead in what has been an exciting ball game. As we head back downstairs, Mike McGivern. Hey, guys, I'm here with Juan Alvarez. He is a journeyman iron worker, and he's part of uh, the apprenticeship instructor. So my father is a bricklayer and a mason. He loved you boys. Oh, yeah. You guys work hard. Talk a little bit about your program. With ironworkers? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, I mean, we do a lot of training. We train with welding. We do. Uh, we teach welding. We teach structural stuff, architectural, glass work, uh, railings, stairs, uh, metal, metal buildings, all kinds of stuff. You know, when you get to talk to these high school age kids, and, and they might not be wanting to go to college, what do you tell them about joining the trades, how important that is? Well, it's very important. Right? Everybody needs stuff built, right? Right. Uh, everything going on, all, the, all of our training is free. When you're getting actually getting paid to go to school, that's four year apprenticeship. Most of our, our iron workers is four year apprenticeship. Uh, most of the apprenticeships are uh, four to five years. But when when you're going to school, you're getting paid good money too. You know, my father, like I said, Brickler and Mason, he was so proud of the work that he did. I'm sure you are as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. Been doing it 27 years. Man. I love it. Yeah. Man, it's good to meet you. Yep. Thank you. Excellent, boys. Back to you. Time show will continue right after this on my 24.
Halftime continues here. We head back downstairs to Mike McGivern. So, guys, operations officer, that's a different title for uh, Mr. Olsen here. It's good to see you, sir. Um, U.S. Marines, let's talk a little bit about when you get a chance to talk to these, these kids in high school, what you tell them and why they should be a Marine. Well, Mike, first of all, I just want to say thank you for having me on for a second year here. Really appreciate awesome. the opportunity. Um, what I talk to them about is the fact that all of these young men, they already know how to be on a team. They already know how to compete. My job is to give them an opportunity to take what they do now and compete in the world's finest fighting force, the United States Marine Corps, and prove to us that they are worthy to compete in that organization. Nobody was more excited for the opening kickoff than you, and it was so good to see you with a smile on your face and, and talking to my grandson. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for everything you do, and keep talking to these kids. Yes, sir. That's what I love about this job is I have the opportunity to go out and give all the amazing things to Amen. the Marine Corps, to these young men and women, from, like, you know, your grandson yep. all the way up to, you know, our grandparents and grand, uh, just very thankful all for everything us. we have. Few the proud. Yes, sir. It's good to see you, brother. Thanks a lot. Back to you, boys. Mike, thank you. Time now for our halftime highlights brought to you by Carthage College. So we take a look. Big plays early on in this ball game. Yeah, some mistakes led to scores, plus some uh, very top-notch individual plays. You see Peavy knocking that ball loose, scooped up. Arvanus Brown on the Butler Brown on the way to the end zone. Fifty yards on the scoop and score, and then this little Brooks dumps it out. Virgis with the touchdown catch that tied the game at seven, but. Big play here, Mitchell connecting to Demayas uh, Lopez. Lopez. Simple flick of the wrist. Yep. Franklin wasn't done. This one, a screen pass that went 50 yards to the house. Shelton, Terrence Shelton with the touchdown reception. Fine run by Shelton after reception. And as time expired in that first half, Mueller... With plenty to spare, a 48-yard field goal, and that's where we stand, 17-14 Franklin. Our highlights brought to you by Carthage College. And we head back downstairs, Mike McGivern, who do you have? Hey, John, I got somebody you know well. He's Ben Gorge. He's the Senior Director of Admission Financial Aid at Carthage. What a perfect time to visit Carthage. Absolutely, Mike. Carthage, we have visit days Monday through Friday right now, Monday through Saturday once the fall starts. Um, beautiful time to visit our campus for the rising seniors, even some of the rising juniors. Come out, visit us. See, You can talk to a coach. You can talk to a professor, sit in on a class, visit our campus, see, the, see all the new facilities we have. We've just added engineering, uh, and our engineering uh, facility is, is halfway done with the second half gonna be, going to be started this fall. I'm um, very excited about that program um, for students across the board, whether it's nursing, whether it's business, whether it's uh, engineering, athletic training. If you want to be an athlete, we have 20, 26 NCAA sports, 27 sports with uh, eSports, so we're a great place to be a student athlete. Hey, thank you so much. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too, Mike. You bet. Boys, back to you. Mike, thank you very much. Second half kickoff comes your way in just a moment right here on My24.
Welcome back to Waukesha as we get set for our second half with Terry Kelly and Mike McGivern. John Weiser with you. 17-14 Franklin as the third quarter gets underway. Our Layuna Local 113 kickoff. And Butler Brown has it go over his shoulder and in the end zone for the touchback. So Catholic Memorial will start this second half from their own 20-yard line. So what we got? What are we looking for here in this second half, Coach? Well, we haven't you know, really seen Memorial's offense. They had the one big play offensively that got the ball to uh, Debadius. Uh, he slipped on his name there for a second. And, uh, you know, he, he caught that pass but they've been kind of stumbling around a little bit, and uh, I'm sure they discussed what they need to do, and I think it's have drives right now. They need to sustain something. Xavier McClinton in at a running back here now. They'll fake the handoff to him. They'll swing it out far side. Marius Butler. Brown Butler able to, Butler Brown able to take it across the 30, out to the 32-yard line. Josh Stamborski. Makes the play, and there's an injured player down for CMH. And it's Donovan Herber. So on the first play of this third quarter. Injury timeout. Bill Young now walking out. Take a look at the injury here. Well, we have a moment. We have a message from one of our new sponsors, Cousins Subs. Hey, we're here at Cousins, and we are so proud that they are a sponsor. Wisconsin-based, locally owned. I'm here with Justin McCoy, Vice President of Marketing. Hey, Justin, I think everybody knows that Cousins has the best subs. I believe that. And you guys have given back to our community so much, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that part of the mission statement with Cousins. Yes, we were founded in 1972 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and giving back to the communities we call home has always been a part of our ethos. You know, um, We, uh, in 2013, created our Make It Better Foundation, and we give back to the community in three different ways, health and wellness, hunger, and youth education. You know, Justin, I think that uh, people know where they were the first time one of our sports teams wins a championship, when, it, when they win a pennant, something like that. I know exactly where I was the first time I had a cheesesteak off of Brady on Farwell. That was your second store. Yeah, that was the second store Bill and Jim opened. Uh, if that store were open today, it would be the busiest store in our system. Uh, it's no longer there, uh, but it's one, of the, it's one of the cornerstones of our brand and how we really exploded on the scene in the Milwaukee. Hey, Jesse, we're so proud to have you as a sponsor and a partner with us on Friday Night Rivals. Cousins Subs, because you guys believe that giving back to the community is so important, and that's what Friday Night Rivals is about, so thank you for that. Thank you for letting us be a part of it. You bet. Back to you. Mike, thank you, and welcome aboard Cousins Subs. Donovan Harbor, the senior left guard, first team all-conference, able to walk it off under his own power. That's good news. Right. They'll take a look at him on the Training table here. Looks like it might be a lower leg injury. But he was able to walk it off. That'll move Nico Rogers in at left guard now. Second and one upcoming here. Play fake. Mitchell with time. Downfield has a receiver and overlet him incomplete. Intended for Josh Oxner, the 6'1 senior at wide receiver. And Mitchell just let him a little too much. And Mitchell coming up. A bit lame here. And you don't know if that's cramping right now. <laughs> well, Mitchell is down now, and they're working on that leg as if it is a cramp. So the second straight play, a player has gone down here for the Crusaders. Again, this is a team already with six players going both ways. And, you know, you see that Donovan Harbor comes out. He was the substitute that you would come in for Carl Peavy sometimes or for Martel Harris. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes kind of a set of dominoes falling. Let's head downstairs once again, Mike McGivern. Hey, guys, I'm here with Chris Oleg. He's from Luna Local 113. Hey, talk a little bit about what you guys do. 
Packer Construction Craft Union. What we do is we work on heavy highways, sewer and water, building projects throughout eastern Wisconsin and throughout the state of Wisconsin. Hey, Chris, how important is it for kids at the high school age to be thinking about getting in the trades? Well, college is very expensive, and uh, the trades is a viable op- opportunity for uh, kids, adults, to come into a construction field, earn a great wage and a living benefit, and have health, pension, and all the rest of it that goes along with it. Hey, and be really proud of the work they do. They absolutely should. Bucks Arena, American Family Field, all these projects that you see in the greater Milwaukee area are all union-built. And we're proud to be union. And Laborers International Union of North America looks forward to working with our youth and helping them get into a career they can be proud of. Chris, it's really good to meet you. Thanks for being part of this. Back to you, boys. All right, Mike, thank you. So, MJ Mitchell, the quarterback, going to walk off here and have his injury tended to. I believe that's Mikey Randa, the yeah. quarterback. So Randa in now, junior. He will hand it off, and there's some running room to the outside 40, 45, 50, and across midfield to the 48 yard line. Good sprint that time by Xavier McClinton on his first carry of the night. Cooper, Camley, and Ty Davis. Finally got him down, but a big gain out across midfield. A Catholic Memorial forced to be going to some of their other players who maybe weren't you know, counting on getting into the game, but so far those young men have been responding well. Mikey Randa, the junior, will take the snap. He will hand it off. Coming around the near side, McClinton again. Works at left side across the 40 and scampers out of bounds near the 38-yard line. Josh Strambowski, Stramborski, I should say, takes him to the boundary for Franklin. But another big gain and another best electric first down as we get another look. So it's McClinton getting the start at running back here in the second half ahead of Corey Smith. We're seeing that speed Memorial possesses, whether they're going to try to get quick passes out to the flanks or get those backs to get to the edge. Seems to be the plan that Memorial's putting into play. Jones in there now. is a single back in the backfield. He will get the handoff, trying to go left, but nothing doing. Wrestled down immediately by Manny Joseph. Joseph's second team all-conference in the Southeast Conference a season ago, and that's why. Sealed the edge that time for the Sabres. Don't want to keep dwelling on this. Another one of those linebackers who wrestles. You see them keep their feet and balance. I see a trend. You want to be an outstanding linebacker, go out for wrestling. Well, I think people forget that wrestling is a good companion sport to football. You learn balance. There's nobody to look to to help you out when you're on that mat. Lewis Brown loves that mindset. Lost back to the 43-yard line, second and 15. Randa rolling right. We'll get rid of it, and we'll throw it away. Chased out of the pocket by Summers. And again, in high school football, since that rule change a year ago, you can dump it off and throw it away, and it is not an intentional grounding. That made it a lot easier on officials to not have to get that judgment call worked in there. A loss of five sets up a third and 15 here. Mitchell back in. Mitchell in at quarterback once again here. Left a couple of plays with that calf injury. Has time. Looks to throw. Has a man out there. Leaping grab. Incomplete. Couldn't follow through on the catch that time. Marvinus Butler-Brown, as we'll take another look, Cooper Camley was on the coverage. How close was this to being six? Once again, you, you see Mitchell, tremendous arm. He really, you know, was hitting him in stride, put it right on the hands, just couldn't come up with the catch. It's like he came down, and at the last second, Camley knocked it out of his hand. 
So it'll bring up fourth down for the Crusaders. Mitchell will do the punting here. This will be a line drive. They'll let it roll. Crusaders trying to get down there to down it. And they do. Josh Oxner getting down there, I believe. Downing it inside the three-yard line. Very effective kick. Our scoring summaries tonight are brought to you by Milwaukee Building Trades, Building Communities, and Careers. So we thank Milwaukee Building Trades. So they'll spot it at the three. 39-yard punt. Good hustle by Oxner to get down there and cover it. Franklin player down on the sideline over there on the field, mm. seemingly with some cramps. You know, one of the things we've noticed tonight that uh, wasn't true a year ago, as Franklin does that stemming, we don't see... Memorial jumping offside, something that they really worked on, I think, coming into this game. I want to remind you to check out the Varsity Blitz High School Sports Radio Show with Mike McGivern. He'll have the head coach from Oak Creek in studio along with three of his seniors. He'll also touch base with Dan Bruner, the executive director of the Wisconsin Football Coaches Association. Then Matt Harris, head coach at Arrowhead, will join Mike to highlight next week's Friday Night Rivals matchup against Homestead. At Saturday mornings from 9 to 11, only on the Big 920 AM and your iHeartRadio app. Well, the first couple weeks when you're in this humid weather, and uh, what's the first thing coaches stress, right? Drink water. Drink water like it's going out of style. Walk around with that gallon jug. Keep it filled with water. We'll head downstairs one more time. Mike McGivern. Hey, guys. I'm here with Mark Miller from Wissports.net. I don't know if I've ever seen you outside. <laughs> He's a bad, He does basketball. You're filling in for Travis. Um, how do you at least so far so good? Pretty good yeah, game. It's a great game, and it's warm. That's what I like. Yeah, it's a great you, game. Some huge kids out here. Huge. huge. Hey, the Rick Majerus uh, WBY shootout's coming up in December. And, uh, man, I'm looking forward to it. Wall to wall basketball. Yeah, we got 27 games on uh, 28th, 28th, and 30th of December at Concordia. Good lineup. So, excited about it already. Man, thank you. Boys, back to you. Mike, thank you. Shelton able to get out of trouble. Takes it across the five, maybe the seven yard line. Like Oxter and perhaps Butler Brown both there for the Crusaders. Well, Shelton had 58 yards in the first half carrying the ball. Now that was his 19th carry of the game. Again, the question on the other side for the Crusaders. We did not see Corey Smith in that first drive tonight. They're fine running back. As Shelton gets the call again, and he is met right at the line of scrimmage. Not much doing there. McCluskey made sure of that. He's had a nice night tonight as well. Yeah, Matt Nicolosi last year, you know, was a tremendous linebacker for them. 11 tackles for a loss on the season. Another top tackler a year ago. Third and a long four. Calais with time. Over the middle, broken up incomplete. Marvinus Butler Brown jumping in front of the intended receiver, Jacques Brooks. What a night for Mr. Butler Brown. Yeah, he, he read that well. He broke on the ball. He almost picked this off. It's the first thing they teach you as a defensive back. Read the quarterback's eyes, it'll follow you to the ball. Yeah, coaches feel that Marvanus is a two-way player, you know, might be their most valuable player. Mueller from the back of his own end zone. Gets away a tremendous punt. Bounce across midfield and will be downed at the Crusader 46-yard line. 41, 51-yard punt, I should say, by Mueller. 
Oh, we saw the strength of his leg on that field goal at the end of the first half. Helps his team get out of trouble here. 8.23 to go in the third. And the Crusaders will take over at their own 46-yard line, trailing by three. That 48-yard field goal as time expired in that second quarter. The difference thus far. Mitchell still struggling with those cramps. Yeah, we're seeing a couple guys in here. Matt McClausey, linebacker's in there on offense right now. Uh, seeing number 13, Evan K at wide receiver. So they're having to try, they're developing some depth, something maybe they didn't think would be coming into play so soon this year. Xavier McClinton at running back, senior. He's in the backfield to the left of Mitchell. Play fake, they'll swing it out. Catch is made here. Butler Brown down the near sideline. Butler Brown out of bounds inside the 10. What a hit. Cooper Camley laying the lumber that time as Marvinus Butler Brown took it down the near sideline. Nearly got into the end zone. And one of the things that we thought would be a key to this game was Franklin had to be excellent tacklers on these speed guys for Catholic Memorial. So the Crusaders now in the Bryant and Stratton College red zone. First and goal just inside the 10-yard line. Corey Smith back in there at running back will take the snap. And he will be brought down just inside the 10, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Hefter and Manny Joseph both there for Franklin. Hefter on a tackle. Quickly to Mike. Hey, guys, heard a little bit about Corey Smith. He may have uh, dinged up a little bit on his shoulder. They think he'll be okay, but they're just being a little precautious with him. Great pickup, Mike. Thank you so much. Wanted to be sure that he was healthy enough to get back in there. He is in there now. His second play of the second half. He is behind Mitchell, the quarterback. Play fake, Mitchell. Scrambling to his right. Looking left. Now we'll throw it away. Good pressure that time. It was Fox, the linebacker, providing that pressure, chasing Mitchell out of the pocket. And again, he is slow to get up. Mitchell with nice size, 6'2", mm. 185 pounds. They, you know, they thought he might have played even more last year, but Isaiah Nathaniel stepped in as a senior, had an excellent year, and uh, Mitchell got hurt in preseason camp, and so wasn't quite ready till partway through the season. Third and goal from just inside the 10-yard line for CMH. Xavier McClinton back in now as a running back. They'll go with three receivers to the far side. Well, they've really got quads to that wide side of the field. they got four potential receivers. Mitchell on a draw. Gets around one tackler and is brought down back at the line of scrimmage. Fox again. You know, we've commented repeatedly on memorial speed. I think you also have to recognize the tremendous speed on the Franklin defense. Yeah, they are covering there. Both Fox and Graffin. Will Graffin. And Mitchell down again. Midway through this third quarter. That that linebacking mm -hmm. core for, mm -hmm. for Franklin. Will Graffin, Talon Summers, Tegan Fox, Manny Joseph. Just really, really flow to the ball. Again, plenty of Division II colleges looking at those linebackers as well. Graffin. Tegan Fox. Summers is one of their captains. Mm -hmm. We will take our break here midway through this third quarter in this exciting ball game, week one. We still got eight more games to go. How are we going to top this? It's your Gruber Law Office's Friday Night Rivals presented by Planet Fitness.
Well, my 24 has the stories that will leave you talking. Spill all the tea with the tantalizing tales of Maury, Karamo, Steve Wilkos, and Jerry Springer. That's weekdays starting at 9 on my 24. With Mike McGivern and Terry Kelly, John Weiser back with you. Waukesha South. Holub Stadium here. MJ Mitchell still nursing that cramping issue. Nicholas on to attempt a field goal here. This will be a 26-yarder. Low snap. Picked up. The kick is on the way. And it is good. 26-yard field goal. Nice job by Mikey Randa. Catch that snap from Owen Strabig. So the 26-yard field goal knots it at 17. As you said earlier, Coach, like a heavyweight fight. Punch, Punch. counterpunch. You know, both teams, uh, you know, are battling, I I guess you'd have to say, themselves at times, Mm -hmm. making some critical mistakes, allows the other team to get a score. But last year's game was much the same way. It went back Mm -hmm. and forth. So Nicholas, after connecting on the 26-yard field goal, will tee it up. Watch how he tees that ball up. It's sideways. Watch this. Well, they've decided they don't want to kick deep. No, he's going to kick it away this time. Well, we'll see if he tries to pooch. You never know. Matt Bergen, their athletic director, is also the special teams coach. I'm sure they've been working on a variety of things. They just as soon not give uh, Shelton or Brooks a chance to get a return. Are you want to? Kickoff brought to you by Lyona Local 113. We'll just tap it into the turf. Who wants it? Shelton will pick it up from inside his own 20. Dances to the 25, across the 30, and out to the 34-yard line. 15-yard return for Terrence Shelton. He's doing it all tonight. Over 20 carries tonight so far. And on special teams, brought down on the play by Ed Jones and Navarian Flowers. Well, last year, Shelton was first-team all-conference, the back of the year in the Southeast Conference. Rushed for well over 1,000 yards, 19 touchdowns, had 28 catches for another touchdown and 347 yards. Multi-purpose back. Joey Calais and the offense back out there now for the Sabres and they give us to Shelton. Terrence Shelton trying the left side. Nothing doing. Good job by the Crusader defense Shelton. that time to seal the edge. Yeah, Matt McCluskey. McCluskey is 6'5 or 6 foot senior, I should say. He has played well tonight. That's how many tackles now? Six tackles on the night. Top Second tackler a year ago. He had 110. His teammate Josh Oxner had 85. It's 195 tackles coming back. Shelton now will come to a receiver position here on the near side. Empty backfield for Calais. Finds the pocket. Now on the scramble. Gets rid of it. Looking for Shelton. Ball is tipped and incomplete through the hands of Shelton. Almost a double deflection. Oxner was there. Dylan Dretkowski was the other receiver there. That almost was tipped right to him through the hands of Shelton. And they're actually lucky it didn't get picked off. Well, defensive coordinator Ryan Stefaniak, longtime D coordinator, really does an excellent job working the little mechanics here of setting up some blitzes, putting pressure in various ways. Always has a very, very stingy defense third and 10 from their own 35 a little bit of that barrel look Mm. again we talked about putting pressure here they come they try and go over the middle it is caught that's kowski check that burgess on the catch kalewa on the tackle short of the first down it will be a fourth and Five here for Franklin, and they choose to punt this one away. Uh, 
Cooper Mueller booted that 48-yard field goal to end the second quarter. On to punt. A 51-yard kick earlier. Gets off another great punt. Angling toward the far sideline, takes a favorable Sabre bounce inside the 15 and downed at the 14-yard line. 46-yard punt that time for Cooper Mueller. And so the Crusaders will get it at their own 14-yard line. Just under five minutes to go here in the third. We're tied at 17. Well, MJ Mitchell coming out again to quarterback. And Donovan Harbor has been back in this half. At front five for a memorial of Strabig, Harbor, Schwab, Thomas, and Harris average just about 300 pounds across that offensive line. Three receivers to the near side here on first down. McClinton. Nowhere to go. Tegan Fox was the first one there for Franklin. Maybe a loss of one on the play. Brings up second and 11. Fake to McClinton. They'll try the screen here to the far side. Butler Brown on the race to the 20-yard line. Gain of about six on the play, short of the first down. Brought down by Will Graffin. So third and four upcoming here for the Crusaders. See what offensive coordinators Scott Rice and Mike Bachanich come up with here. They'll put Cale Johns and Butler Brown out there to the far side. Brown in the slot. Xavier McClinton, the single back in the backfield. Fake to McClinton. Mitchell will turn to his right. Throwing downfield. Wide Man wide open over the middle. Can't connect and complete. Oh, my goodness. Marvinus Butler-Brown was wide open, and Mitchell's pass just a little too strong. As Butler-Brown beating Cooper Camley that time down the field. Oh. Yeah, got behind the defense that time, and, and once again, the little flick of the wrist by Mitchell. Excellent arm strength. Certainly could have been a big game, perhaps six on that play, but through the fingertips, sets up fourth down. Corey Smith is out there to punt here for Catholic Memorial. Gets this one away. Fair catch signaled for and made at the 42-yard line by Ty Davis. Pretty good punt there by Smith. Yeah, the first first punt he had this evening wasn't that good, but he's had his other punts have been nice and high. Plenty of time to get down and cover. Each week we will highlight the best of the best with the Cousins Subs best play of the game. Brought to you by Cousins Subs. We believe in better. Franklin from their own 42-yard line with 3.09 to go here in the third. Game tied at 17. Clay with time. Pump fakes. Back over the middle, and it is. Is it a catch or not? They're going to rule it a catch at the 40, 39-yard line. Couldn't, couldn't quite see that. Yeah. Let's see the replay here.
Well, he kept that hand on the ball. It'll go as a first down, first and 10 from the 39. And again, a quick hit over the middle. Pass complete, and Kalau on the tackle. Kalawa there to make the stop on the catch by Ben Virgis. Well, Joey Kalea, a baseball player, puts a lot of speed on that ball. Brooks and man coverage here to the near side. Play fake. Kalea trying to step up. Kalea going to be brought down back at the 37-yard line. John Schwab, a senior, able to come up with the sack. Another example of how backup Schwab yep. is their starting center on offense. Mm -hmm. He now has to help fill in on that defensive front. Some of those guys getting a little tired. Carl Peavy has had some problems with cramps. Great job by Schwab to stay with it. Keep the quarterback in his sights. Trips to the left side here on third and eight. Calais on the scramble. Calais back over the middle. Completes a Virgis at the 30-yard line. It appears to be short. McLusky was there to cover him up. And ooh, they're going to move the sticks. Wow. Well, it looked like he was stopped right at the 30-yard line. They're going to move the chains, give him the best electric first down. Under a minute to go now in this third quarter. Franklin on the move. At the Crusader 29, Shelton. Inside the 25, down to the 24-yard line. Well, going back to that last play, I thought it was stopped a yard shy of the first down. So did I. It's, it's a you know, it's a shame we don't have a end zone shot tonight right. to watch how Shelton is able to get himself through with just the smallest. This is that third play. down play. Watch where yeah. he lands. Well, with the ball right at that 30-yard line. Play fake to Shelton. Kalei with time. Now on the run. Kalei gets rid of it. Completes the pass to Brooks. Touchdown, Franklin. Touchdown, Jack Brooks. With the touchdown grab. It'll be interesting to see if he is actually the attended receiver. He had two guys in the area. And Franklin retakes the lead. One more look. Was he trying to get that a little deeper? To, to Meisner? Yeah. I, I you know, can't tell, but... Mueller for the extra point. It is good. And Franklin jumps in front. 24-17 late here in the third. Another look. Good composure by Calais. And yeah, it looked like maybe he was going to try to get that to Meissner. Into the end zone. But instead it goes to Brooks. And he totes the mail. I don't know if Calais in baseball is a uh, infielder or if he's a pitcher, but he does no. really throw the pill. Yes, he does. Brooks, his first touchdown reception of the year. There's your scoring drive. Six plays. 58-yard drive capped off by the Brooks touchdown reception. Spitzer, our stat man. Already in mid-season form. I don't care what Mr. McGivern says no. about Spitzer. He is okay. He is, he is. Excellent job. Smith and Butler Brown deep. And that one will go into the end zone. Third touchback tonight by Mueller. Got to the Franklin practice uh, this week, and, and Mueller was uh, not having to watch film from the scrimmage. He was okay. He was outside. I asked him, you know, you thinking about kicking in college? He said, well, I've been thinking about it. You know, he said, I haven't heard a lot lately. 
hopefully if the season goes well, I'll, I'll get a chance. And he, he certainly has demonstrated he's got the kind of leg colleges would be looking to have work for them. In clutch situations, that 48-yard field goal to end the first half, a 51-yard punt out of his own end zone. Those are the things college scouts looking at. 17 seconds remaining in the quarter from their own 20. McClinton, Xavier McClinton to the 22, brought down by Summers. That's seven tackles tonight for Summers. As time expires here in the third, we've got a great one here tonight. As we head to the fourth, our Gruber Law Office's Friday Night Rivals presented by Planet Fitness, Franklin by seven, heading to the fourth on my 24. Mike McGivern, Terry Kelly, John Weiser back with you for the fourth quarter here on our season opener of Friday Night Rivals. Glad you're with us. An exciting ball game here. Second and eight. Nice play out across the 25 to the 27 yard line. Corey Smith with the carry. And again, slow to get up is Corey Smith. Ooh, brought down by Manny Joseph as we'll get another look here. Mike mentioned earlier he was dealing with a shoulder injury and he came down hard, hard on, on that on shoulder. shoulder. And so time has been called here to 10 to Corey Smith. Stay with us coming up at the end of our broadcast tonight. We'll have the United States Marine Corps Player of the Game Award presentation. Mike McGivern will be part of that down on the sideline. So a game of attrition here tonight for both teams. MJ Mitchell there, the quarterback, has been dealing with cramps here in the second half. Now Corey Smith down. We earlier had uh, Donovan Harbor go down with look like a lower leg injury. But Smith is now up under his own power and walking to the near sideline. You wonder what the coaching staff mm. will decide here. Do we not risk having the injury become more serious. Uh, they've shown that they've got a couple guys uh, that can come in there. Xavier McClinton, McClinton has mm -hmm. stepped in and had a good performance this evening. So Smith was stopped short of the 
first down marker. It'll be third and three here for Catholic Memorial from their own 27. And they moved it back to the 15-yard line. They're Was there a penalty on that last play? I did not see a did flag. Did not see a throw. flag either. Play fake. Mitchell with time. Going again, looking for Butler Brown. Over the shoulder grab. Butler Brown inside the 20 to the 10. Touchdown, Crusaders. A Planet Fitness highlight touchdown by Barvenus Butler Brown. Wow! Another excellent throw by Mitchell. Um, Look at that. On a rope. Beautifully thrown. Great concentration by Butler Brown to hang on to it. Able to get away from Ty Davis. Eighty-five yard touchdown pass. Big play again. Nicholas for the extra point. It is on the way and it is good. We are knotted at twenty-four. Here in the fourth, another look. Well, we'll keep this boxing analogy going. We talked about punch and counter punch, but both of these teams have been showing some knockout punches as they continue through the game. <laughs> One of the spectators congratulating. <laughs> MJ Mitchell dropping dimes here. It officially goes as an 80 yard touchdown drive on three plays. And those two have come close a couple of times on hooking up for big gains tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, one of the things I was expecting to see in the game was perhaps Mitchell carry the ball a little bit more because attention will be drawn to uh, Corey, Corey Smith. But, boy, you've watched this young man throw, and you say, wow. Shelton and Brooks are deep. Let's see what Nicholas does with this kickoff. Iona local 113 kickoff. A line drive. Backs Brooks up to his own six. Cuts across the 20. Breaks it outside. 20, 30, 30, 45 and out of bounds at midfield. 44-yard return. Gabe Tella finally got him to the boundary. And this heavyweight fight continues in the middle of the ring. Yeah, Memorial went away from that squib kick yeah. strategy. And, and the ball has been getting to the two deep receivers. You know, once again, you're, you're never quite sure what's going to happen. Well, mark it at the 48-yard line. 42-yard return by Brooks. First and 10, Franklin. Clay will give it Shelton. Hole over the right side, and he'll take it across the 45 down to the 42-yard line. Kalawa there, Ben Kalawa. He's been busy tonight. That's his sixth tackle tonight. Now a little up-tempo here for Franklin. Second and one. Let's see what they do here. Shelton picks his way around the left side. First down inside the 40. Wrapped up by Jayshon Thomas in there now at nose tackle for the Crusaders. It'll be a best electric first down for the Sabres. Catholic Memorial shuffling guys in and out of that defensive line as they're, they're trying to deal with uh, some of these guys getting very, very tired. 
Okay, kind of a five-man look in the front now. And we got a flag at the snap. A false start penalty here against Franklin. And for a first week game, very few flags tonight. Right. We had mentioned a year ago mm -hmm. how Memorial was plagued by problems offensively. But uh, tonight overall, you know, th that's not the type of mistake that's been creating problems. First and 15 for Franklin. Calais with time. Scrambling left, gets rid of it down the sideline. Shelton with the catch. He made the catch in bounds. Unbelievable catch. What a catch at the 21 yard line by Terrence Shelton. You talk about that balance, able to keep both feet in bounds. Didn't quite see. What a catch. First down. Shelton on the carry. And he'll be tackled for a loss. Donovan Harbor back in there after that ankle injury in the first half with a TFL. You know, Harbor with his size, you know, presents all kinds of problems. You know, 6'5", 320, <laughs> All-State player a year ago. He, too, headed to Penn State with now teammate Corey Smith. Now they're bringing Jay Sean Thomas in to <laughs> give Harbor some rest. Play fake to Shelton. Calais steps up. Over the middle, man, there, touchdown, Franklin. A dart to Dylan Drachkowski. And Franklin jumps back in front. Little bust in the defensive secondary. Yep. Little crossing pattern. One more yeah. look at this Planet Fitness touchdown. It looked like the safety was looking for help there. Mueller on for the extra point. 21 yard touchdown pass by Calais. And Mueller's extra point makes it 31 24. Franklin, with just over nine minutes to play here in the game. One more look. Dylan Draskowski got behind the secondary. And Oxner was looking for some help, I think. He was trying to play center field there, but he thought it was man coverage, and the guy released and let the receiver through to the second level, and damage done. So this back and forth affair continues. Four plays, 52 yards, the 21 yard touchdown pass by Kalei to Drachkowski. And on the return. Smith will take it out across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Grayson Dahlstrom there to make the tackle for the Sabres. Well, we'll see what Scott Rice and Mike Pachanich are going to dial up here. There's over nine minutes to go in this quarter. Closed captioning tonight is brought to you by LifeLock. LifeLock Identity Theft Protection starts here.
Mitchell back in at quarterback. Smith in there now too. Mitchell now, broken play. They'll take it across the 25. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Not sure if that was a read option or not there by Mitchell and Smith. Right, they, the mesh didn't seem mm. to be quite where they wanted it. Eight and a half minutes to play. Memorial trailing here. They'll empty the backfield. Now they'll bring Smith back in. Arvanus Butler Brown in a slot here to the near side. Two by two receiving core. Mitchell in trouble. Got it away and looking for a flag. And there it is. Summers with the pressure forcing Mitchell. That ball, I don't think, got back to the line of scrimmage. Let's see what they decide here. The official's talking about it. You're right. Was there an intended receiver in the area? It is a grounding call here against CMH. It'll be a loss of down as well. We'll take another look. Well, there was nobody in the area. And he was avoiding the sack. And from the spot of the infraction is where they will spot this at the 10-yard line. So third and 27 for CMH. Mitchell on the scramble. He's got a guy in open and deep again. Oxner makes the catch. Oxner with a huge grab. Josh Oxner, the senior. Mitchell threw it up for grabs, and Oxner answered his prayer. Kept his balance. And Oxner got behind Stramborski down to the 30. Four yard line. On four or five throws tonight, Mitchell's averaging like 50 yards mm. per throw. That one was for 56. And a best electric first down for the Crusaders. Looking right now on the scrambles, Mitchell again. They'll put it up and it'll get to the sideline, out of bounds, incomplete. Once again intended for Marvinus Butler Brown, but well beyond the boundary. On the far side that time, I hope I don't know if Franklin was checking carefully. We we had Corey Smith running a wheel route mm. right down the sidelines. And once again with his speed, a real threat. Clock stops, 7.05 to play. Crusaders trailing by seven, but a 56-yard pass play has set them up in Franklin territory. Pitch to Corey Smith. Smith trying to get the edge right side. Smith inside the 30 and wrestled down near the 28-yard line, short of the first down. Summers, the linebacker there to make the stop. I do think even if they're short on third down here, they will go for it on fourth. Yeah, I have to believe this is a four down territory here for Catholic Memorial. 34 for the Crusaders. Again, Smith in the backfield. They'll go trips to the left side of the formation. MJ Mitchell takes the snap. Bubble screen. Butler Brown has a block. Butler Brown down the far sideline. 
And out of bounds near the 15-yard line. Gain of 13 on the play. Those little bubble screens mm. present real problems for Franklin because of the speed that the receivers have. Ty Davis ready to get there for Franklin. And now they're in the Bryant and Stratton College red zone. I'm going to go back to that play. Cale Johns did a nice job sealing off the linebacker there that allowed Butler Brown to get to that outside boundary. Got four receivers to the right side here. They bring one back in motion. Mitchell is going to be pulled down for a sack. Back at the 20-yard line. Manny Joseph. Manny Joseph again. Second team all-conference performer a year ago in the Southeast Conference. Six tackles and a sack tonight for Joseph. Clock continues to roll here under six minutes to play. Again, they use these signboards here to signal in the play. Smith, the single back, will now line up to the right, and now timeout taken by Bill Young. Weren't sure, so when not sure, you take the time out. We'll take a break as well. Don't go away. This one's not over yet. Catholic Memorial trailing by seven on our Gruber Law Office's Friday Night Rivals presented by Planet Fitness. And Bob will have a hold on his on Bill's tackle on his. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> It's the shows the Pro Watch is for now is now for everyone. An all new season of scoops and insights comes to the CW with the premiere of Inside the NFL. That's Tuesday night, September fifth at seven p.m. on CW eighteen. Pressure on Mitchell gets it away, completes far side, missed tackle. Venus Butler Brown. Made the first man miss, took it inside the 15. Down about the 13 yard line, short of the first down. What could have been a big loss there averted. A scrambling ability that time by Mitchell. The line holds true here as a defensive back. You don't try to come up and necessarily kill the guy. You want to make the tackle. So third and nine for the Crusaders. Ball at the 14-yard line. Butler Brown in a slot here to the near side. Wide snap corralled by Mitchell. Will dump it off inside the 10, down to the six-yard line with it. McLosky brought down by Camley, and he'll get the first down. So another two-way player here for the Crusaders stepping up. So first and goal inside the Bryant and Stratton College red zone. Clock will roll under four minutes to play here for CMH. They'll spot it at the five.
trips to the near side. Smith, the lone running back behind Mitchell, the quarterback. They'll fake the pitch. Mitchell trying to get the edge. Nowhere to go. Now cuts back right. Mitchell still on the scramble. Gets it away, and it's incomplete. Penalty marker thrown. What do we have? Ineligible downfield, I think. I think one of the linemen. It's thrown by the back judge. Yep, that's exactly what it is. All that scrambling and preliminary signal was an ineligible receiver downfield. It's only a five yard penalty. As we watch MJ Mitchell tonight, we can see yep. why he is gonna cause headaches all year long for the opponents. There are seven coaches in that Parkland conference that are gonna have a sleepless night tonight thinking about how they're gonna to have to put something together to contain him. You know, they already have Corey Smith as yeah. a threat now, yeah, yeah, yeah and Jay Mitchell. Second and goal from the 10. Mitchell takes the snap, fakes the handoff. And he's going to be driven down for a loss back at the 25-yard line. Manny Joseph again, his second sack of the half. Seventh tackle of the night for Joseph. And it comes at a big time for that Franklin defense. Second end goal upcoming here. Clock under three minutes to play. They'll spot it at the 21. A lot of time going by here. Mm. Marvanus Butler Brown in a slot here to the near side, along with Oxner. Mitchell takes the snap, has time, surveys the field. Down it goes, and he throws it away incomplete. Nearest player out there was Mar Marvanus Butler-Brown, but he was cutting all the way across the end zone to try and catch up with that pass. So, brings up third and goal from the 21. One of the things I'm surprised they haven't tried with all their wide receivers and stuff, quarterback draw. You've got a quarterback like M.J. Mitchell who can certainly be an elusive runner. Now, this might not be the place for it, but uh, he's always a threat. Again, Butler Brown in the slot here to the right side. Corey Smith, the lone running back. Mitchell from the gun. Again with time. Back corner of the end zone and it's incomplete. Excellent coverage yes. that time. Oxner the intended target, but Camley was right with him step for step. Well, it comes down to this. Fourth and goal for the Crusaders. They trail by seven with 2.12 to play. What does Bill Young have in store here? I'm sure Scott Rice, Mike Bashanich, going down that playlist, where can we get a matchup that gives us the advantage. Anything short of the goal line and they turn it over on downs. Here we go, fourth and goal. Smith the setback, lone running back. Oxner and Butler Brown to the right side. Joseph 
trying to chase down Mitchell. Mitchell again. Throws it over the middle of the field. It goes incomplete. And Franklin will take over on downs with 2.02 to play. Now Catholic Memorial has two timeouts. So they can certainly get the ball back. Lewis Brown congratulating his defense on the stop here. But Manny Joseph again flushing Mitchell out of the pocket. Butler Brown struggling to get off the field here with cramps. Trying to make it back to the near sideline. Again, the Crusaders with two timeouts remaining. Cannot let the Sabres get a first down. They'll give it to Shelton. Shelton up the middle across the 20 to the 23-yard line, and immediately Bill Young will take that second timeout. Gain of a couple brought down by Martel Harris, the nose tackle for the Crusaders. And now Shelton limps his way back to the far sideline. <laughs> 24 carries for 92 yards tonight for Shelton. Another uplift Wisconsin timeout here. A minute 57 to play. If Memorial can hold them. There's no doubt that you can have a player in Mitchell who can get the ball downfield to three or four guys who all pose a real threat. Joey Calais will get them set. Shelton the single back in the backfield. Bare front again by Memorial. Shelton gets it again. Moves the pile forward to the 25. Gain of a couple and the final timeout taken by the Crusaders here. Carl Peavy credited with the tackle for CMH. He's had a fine game tonight. Yeah, missed miss some time because once again here's one of those young men from Memorial playing both ways tackle for a loss sack forced fumble tonight by Peavy well, Memorial if they stop him this down they can certainly get the ball back with over a minute to play more than enough time By just looking ahead to next week, Memorial's got Marquette at home. Franklin travels to Fondy to take on Fond du Lac. Nobody trying to dodge anybody no, in this, this opening part of the season. Mm -mm. Now Franklin takes a timeout. They're first. Yeah, you look at the schedule for these teams and got CMH going another home game next week over at uh, Carroll University. They'll host Marquette. Then they play a Thursday night game against Milwaukee Lutheran. And then open up and go on the road to Pewaukee and Tosa East. Meanwhile, for Franklin, they're at Fond du Lac home against Fond du Lac, I should say, and then open up Southeast Conference play against Racine Case, another upstart team in that Southeast Conference. And then their showdown with Oak Creek coming up in late September. Okay, Memorial going to put pressure on that front six men up front. 
Play, play fake, gonna swing it out, got him! First down and more for Franklin. The fake to Shelton. Excellent call by Drew Ambrose. Yes. Little boot action. The fake to Shelton. Clay on the boot. And then finds Meissner for the first down. Brought down by Oxner. <laughs> Crusaders do not have any timeouts remaining. And the cell phone lights are on on the Franklin sideline. Shelton picking his way around the right side. Boy, he has had a game tonight. 26 carries. Just shy of 100 yards tonight. Just the fact that he's helped them maintain yes. possession yep. has been a critical factor in this game. Now, if you're Kalei, you got to watch your, keep your eyes on the back judge who will count you down. Okay, they can take it to under a minute here. And they'll snap it one more time, and the Franklin Sabres will hand Catholic Memorial. Back-to-back -back losses. You go back to that championship game in Division Four against Marshfield Columbus. Just Columbus. Just Columbus. Oh, Columbus, <laughs> excuse me. And I think the thing to remember this year is good chance the Memorial could move up to Division, Division three. three. And Franklin takes a knee. And the Sabres come to Waukesha and avenge a home loss to Catholic Memorial from a season ago. And this time it's the Sabres who hang on for the 31-24 victory. Teams will go through the handshake line. Stay tuned. We've got our player of the game coming up, as well as our championship trophy presentation tonight. And we'll have our best play of the game as well. All of that coming up in our post game, your final tonight. Franklin over Catholic Memorial, 31-24. Back after this, this is Friday Night Rivals on My 24.
What a ball game tonight. Franklin hangs on for the 31-24 victory, and uh, this time they turn the tables on CMH, avenging last year's loss. Certainly, uh, you know, both teams have things they can look at tonight and take a lot of pride in, but they also see some areas they're going to have to shore up moving forward. It's time now for a United States Marine Corps Player of the Game Award presentation. We send it down to Mike McGivern. So I, I asked uh, Coach Brown, I said, I need 30. He goes, he's the player of the game. He's not even 30. And we laughed a little bit. Man, a lot of respect to this young man. Uh, U.S. Marine player of the game, man, that was a really good game for you. Um, a lot of boys to thank. Yes, sir. I couldn't have done it without my offensive line. You know, my receivers blocking out there for me and uh, my quarterback, and especially that defense for holding it down for us. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. I tell you what, you know, that's the sound of a, a U.S. Marine right there. Took no credit to himself and just thanked everybody else. Oh, no, absolutely. I was so impressed by this young man's determination and his humility, and that's why he deserves this trophy. We're going to be back. We're going to get this engraved with all your stats from tonight and be back in your school next week. Really, really proud of you, young man. Hey, congratulations. Uh, Taryn Shelton, our U.S. Marine player of the game. Back to you, boys. Yeah, what a night for Taryn Shelton. Not only 26 carries for 98 yards and that 50-yard touchdown pass on a screen pass, but, Coach, you mentioned it. He stabilized the game and held that game in tech for the Sabres. You know, he allowed Franklin to maintain possession. And, you know, you want to limit the opportunities you give Memorial. And you saw what a uh, not only forceful runner he is, but how elusive. Here's that screen pass for the touchdown, the balance that he had on this particular play. Able to break a couple of tackles and spin his way into the end zone. So Terrence Shelton, our player of the game, 26 carries, 98 yards, and a touchdown catch tonight. Our United States Marine Corps player of the game. Well, as always, we've got a trophy for our winners on Friday Night Rivals. So let's head back down to Mike McGivern with head coach Lewis Brown. Hey, coach, uh, really, really good win for your program. And before the game, I said, look, how you feeling? He said, we got some guys, man. We're, we're good. We got a chance to be good. And I think we'll be really good at the end of the year. We'll find out how we are tonight. You got to be proud of these boys. Awfully proud. I mean, I think uh, all three phases. I mean, we got some things to work on. A really good program is going to make you uh, show your weaknesses. But I'll tell you what, we got some warriors here. They paid our theme this year is full price. That was a full price game. Everyone in the stands, they got their money's worth. Man, you know what, Coach, and then some. I have to be honest with you. When you go home and watch the film, you're right. There's some stuff to work on. But, man, oh, man, you're going to be proud of the guts and courage this team showed. Absolutely. We're in a great offseason. Uh, we got 18 starter, returning starters that were on the field today. Guess what? They grew up. Yeah. We're, we're, we're a team to be reckoned with for sure. Coach, good luck against Fond du Lac next week. Good to see you. Fond, uh, hey, well done, Franklin. Go after it now. Let me get out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. How you been, brother? Franklin, your winner here tonight. They hang on for a 31-24 victory over the Crusaders from Catholic Memorial. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll have our cousin subs best play of the game presentation and more as our postgame continues here from Waukesha right after this. This is the Gruber Law Office's Friday Night Rivals presented by Planet Fitness.
Friday Night Rivals postgame continues here from Waukesha tonight. Let's take a look at our Ad Milwaukee Admirals hit of the game brought to you by Milwaukee Admirals Hockey. And here it is. The collision there on the sideline. Eddie Jones able to deliver the blow that time to the wide receiver. Dylan Dratchkowski, that is our hit of the game, brought to you by the Milwaukee Admirals. Now we'll have our Cousins play of the game, brought to you by Cousins Subs. And this came late here. A sack as the Crusaders were driving with less than three minutes to play, the opportunity to try and get it in the end zone. And the Manny Joseph sack... One of two tonight by Joseph. The big play, our cousin subs, best play of the game. Cousin subs, we believe in better. Took him out of the red zone. That was critical at that point. Not often you say the Crusaders from Catholic Memorial start off 0-1. Right. But uh, it's a long season, and uh, it depends what you learn and what you do this coming week. They will take on Marquette. Franklin will take on Fond du Lac. Our thanks tonight to sponsors who bring us Friday Night Rivals to you each week. Gruber Law Offices and Planet Fitness, along with Best Electric Service. Uplift Wisconsin, Bryant and Stratton College, the United States Army, Layuna Local 113, United States Marine Corps, Carthage College, the West Bend Insurance, LifeLock, Wendy's, Milwaukee Building and Construction Trades Council, the Milwaukee Admirals, and Cousins Subs. Don't forget tonight's game will replay on My24 tomorrow afternoon. That'll be at 2 o'clock on Saturday. And next week's matchup will feature Highland, the Highlanders of Homestead traveling north to play the Warhawks at Arrowhead. That'll be Homestead at Arrowhead next Friday night. Our, our Gruber Law Office's Friday Night Rivals presented by Planet Fitness. Big thanks to our My24 crew here tonight. To Mike McGivern, Terry Kelly, Andy Spitzer, our Statman guru, I'm John Weiser. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast, if not the final outcome. Again, your score tonight, Franklin hangs on to defeat Catholic Memorial 31-24. to From all of us at My24 Sports, have a great evening. Thanks for tuning in to Friday Night Rivals on My24.